<clears throat> All right, hey everybody, Grim Green from GrimGreen.com back here today. Now this video is going to be entirely up close because that's what we're going to be focusing on. This is the Watofo Serpent. I'm gonna show you the easiest way I've found to build it and wick it. Now, if you look at this deck, you can see that the post holes are strange, they're offset, which confused me at first. So you can see right there, looking at the deck square on, that the post holes are offset. They're offset to one side. So you build a single coil in between them, and then you have your wicks and these little juice channels. And it actually works really, really well, but I had to slightly adjust the way that I build for it. So that's what I'm gonna show you. Shout out to Ray Lowe at Kidney Puncher. We're gonna be using some of their uh, 316L stainless steel wire in 24 gauge. Now, when I build coils, I have a certain way of wrapping. I have my tool and I have my wire and I put my wire behind the tool, right? And then I hold it in place. Well, you, you, eventually you'll hold it in place. You hold it in place with your finger like this and then I wrap around this way, right? And that's just how I wrap all my coils. There's no real reason behind it. When I started wrapping coils, that's just how I did it, and then I continued doing it that way. But with this RDA, or RDA, RTA, the way that you have to wrap is backwards of that. So you place the wire in front of your tool, and you can still wrap the same direction, but you have to have your wire in front of your wrapping tool, whatever you're using, as opposed to behind it, because you need your leads to be coming out a certain way. This is the big adjustment I had to make. I'm not used to wrapping like this. Or alternatively, if you're using a coil master type coil tool, you're gonna wanna put your lead, you're gonna wanna put your wire in the back there, and you're gonna wrap it forward, over, let me make sure this is the right one, yeah, three millimeter, forward, over it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that's how you would do it if you were building for an RDA. But we're not building for an RDA, we're building for an RTA. So what you're gonna wanna do is give it one extra turn like that, so that one of your leads is coming off this way and one of your leads is coming off this way. So you got your coil all ready to go. You have a lead going this way, a lead going this way. Now, now it's time to install it. So once you have that first lead secured through that first post, you're just gonna spin it around and you're gonna see over here, and this lead is kind of lining up with this hole right here. And we're not gonna bend it and try and go around the front. All we're gonna do is clip it and stick it in from behind. So what you wanna do is eyeball. And I'm gonna eyeball kind of, mm, I don't know, like towards the edge of this post right here. It's gonna make much more sense once you actually see the cut. But I'm gonna try to cut it close to the post kind of right about there. Now this is a little bit hard to show on camera, but all I did was cut the lead and I used a very small flathead screwdriver and I kind of just set it in there. I just pressed it over and set it in there and it pops right in there. And if you cut your lead properly, it should be going in there with no issues. Got the tool back in there and you can kind of see, now you have the chance to kind of move it around, fiddle it around, and you cut that lead, you just, it literally, you take a little flathead screwdriver, you press it in and it just pops in super easy because this post hole is actually in the same direction as your lead is. So now that we got that in there, we're gonna tighten it down. So we cut that other lead off and I'm just gonna turn this around to kinda show you where the leads are going, kinda give you a better idea. I realize that this is difficult to see, it's even more difficult to actually execute on camera, but the easiest way to do it, secure the first post, clip your second wire like flush with the edge of this post, take a little flathead screwdriver, pop it in, it couldn't be easier. And when it's all said and done, you should have a nice coil in there where your opening to your coil spills out right here into your juice flow channel on that side and on that side. Now I'm running this on a Relo RX200, and the great thing about stainless steel wires, you can run it in wattage mode to make sure that your coils are glowing all nice and evenly, and when they are and you can cool it down, you can switch it over to the stainless steel 
temp mode and run it in temperature mode. So that's basically what we're gonna do with this. Now we're going to wick it. Gonna be using the Kogendo Japanese organic cotton and now wicking this is probably one of the easiest RTAs you'll ever have to wick. So first step is I peel off one of the harder outer layers of the cotton. Then what I'm gonna do is just roll one end in my fingers so that we can get it through the coil, just like that. We're gonna put the rolled up end of cotton through the coil, just like this, and pull it. Make sure it's nice and snug in there. We can kind of move it back and forth a little bit, but for the most part, we want it to be snug. Then literally all you're gonna do is cut your cotton down so that you can juice it and kind of I don't know, just sort of press it near into this little juice flow hole right there, that little juice flow channel right there. That's what you want your, that's where you want your wick. So as you can see, I got the wick all juiced up and that's really what you're going for. You don't wanna clog up this juice flow channel with all sorts of cotton. All I did was get it wet, I kind of pressed it onto the deck there and I have the majority, the majority of my wick kind of hovering over that little juice flow hole. Now that it's juiced, oh yes, it is producing the vapors. So what we have to do now is take the rest of the tank and put it together. Unfortunately, the rest of the tank is all one big piece. This is your chimney part that's gonna go over your coils, and then here's your juice flow control. So once I get the wicks all wet and I got it, and you know, I make sure it's producing the vapors, what I'm gonna do is just screw this all together. And you can see by twisting this top part here, that closes off the juice flow. And if you unscrew it, it opens up your juice flow. So in order to fill the tank, you're gonna need to close your juice flow off all the way so it's tight. Uh, uh, uh. Then once your juice flow is closed off, you kind of hold the top of the tank right here and you can unscrew this portion right here. You got two large kidney shaped juice fill holes and then you just bleh, dump your juice in there. And then once your tank is full, all I do is I give it about two turns to open up the juice flow. One, two. Done, that's it. So, this is all good to vape. I may have lied. We may need to get back out to normal view just so I can show you how it vapes, give you my closing thoughts. Normal view, normal view. So yeah, that's how you do up the Watofo Serpent. Once you do it a couple times, it does get really, really easy. I hope that translated well into video, but it's a little bit weird. The post holes are offset, and so I had to adjust the way I build in order to get a quick build on here. It's easy if you just slide your coil in, position it, cut your leads, and then you just kind of pop that other one in there. The way I wicked it has been just fantastic. I've been getting no dry hits, just wonderful, delicious flavor, wonderful, delicious vapor. I have the airflow holes fully open right now, and all I do, so if this is screwed all the way down, like I just filled it up, I give it one, two, and that's it. That is enough juice flow for the way that I've wicked it, and you can adjust it, you can open it up more, you can close it down more. If you're getting flooded or dry hits, you can adjust your juice flow accordingly. For me, this has been pretty freaking fantastic. I didn't believe Matt when he said it was his favorite rebuildable tank of the year, but I'm a believer. I actually really like this Watofo Serpent. It's been giving me great flavor. You have to adjust your build a little bit, or maybe not. I did, you might not have to. Uh, overall, I really enjoyed it. Let me just show you how it vapes. Like I said, really good flavor, really good performance. I'm running stainless steel in temp mode, which, ah, I'm not a huge fan of, but it seems to be working just fine. Like I said, the great thing about stainless steel is you can pinch and pulse and dry burn your coils and then get them all nice and glowing evenly and then you can swap it over to stainless steel temp mode on something that supports it like the Relo RX200 and uh, have a temp control vape that's actually probably one of the best temp control vapes I've 
ever had. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that, but yeah, it is what it is. I didn't want this to run too long. In fact, I wanted it to be all uppy closely, but I realized that uh, if you want to see it vape, then that's just not possible.